part of his commitment to ensuring the Nigerian e-commerce platform becomes more viable and customer-centric, Philips Consulting hosted stakeholders to his 2016 Nigerian Online Shopping Survey Report presentation. In his opening remarks, Mr. Bayer Adesanya, associate partner, Philips Consulting, gave key highlights from the report. Internet users have grown from 80,000 in 2000, right, to almost 78 million as at last year. And I think that's phenomenal. 80,000 in 2000 to 78 million in 2015. And one in three internet users in Africa is from where? Right here. As our income levels increase, as we come out of the recession, we're all praying by next year, um, an income level sort of return to where they were before we took this deep, double dip, triple dip, dip. Um, our tastes get more refined. You move into the middle income level um, and you want to acquire more things, okay? Uh, you have a higher level of exposure and uh, access to technology and more finances. Uh, so that will continue to spur um, the activities in the sector. Panelists discussed the issues on the online retail space from gaining trust from customers to security. What we'd like to see, and it's something we started focusing on in InterSwitch, is introducing security to improve customer experience. And there are a number of ways you can do that. So you can have some non-evasive security controls to compensate for reducing the number of things you ask for before the transaction is allowed to proceed. Okay. So you can do things, if you learn from um, companies who, who've been doing this over a couple of years, like Amazon, like PayPal, what they do is they have some very advanced security controls uh, behind the scenes um, that checks your customer behavior, checks that you're doing the transaction from a device that's associated with you, and then based on a positive feedback from that check, determine whether or not to ask you for your great-grandfather's middle name, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. The whole concept of security and API platforms is about <coughs> basically opening up the API platforms for developer community to go innovate with you. So if your idea is to make sure that you can open up partnerships all over the world, because fintech developers and payment, uh, payment program developers as well exist all over the world and they can collaborate with you via your APIs and build solutions that your organization might not have the capacity or the innovation to be able to build totally. So this partnership in itself, it, it, it creates on one side significant opportunities for collaboration, significant opportunities for value adding customer service solutions and allows even the customers themselves to be able to have a say in the way they are being served. I think there's certainly a need for us as we look at um, security risk management you know, in this space that beyond our safeguards and countermeasures for which we're responsible internally um, for implementing and operating that we also recognize that those residual, residual and there will always there are always residual security risk, that we have a mechanism for actually transferring that into some kind of insurance or other forms of um, risk management. Because without that, um, you're not going to have a happy customer at the, end, at the end of the day. Explain to your customer, um, like I was at industry about all the safeguards they had in place, for which reasons we say fraud should not occur, and the person still says, I have some kind of dispute whatever else it may be. First of all, customers and shoppers need to understand the security levels, you know, that provides that assurance to be able, you know, to be safe in putting up my card credentials or my card details to be able to make such, trans uh, to make such transactions on that, on that platform. Very important. Now, on the payments itself, you know, I need to be sure that, look, whoever I'm going to liaise with, whoever um, um, payment provider is going to be, I mean, I'll be referring to, I'll be using to, you know, process my transaction, it's that those payment platforms or the payment application itself is PADSS compliant. What that, what that does is that it ensures that the required controls, just as you mentioned, are in place. And then it also assures that, look, going forward, the required changes, co correlations, and improvements, you know, in maintaining that standard is upheld over a period of time. Now, one thing I don't think we've done really well in this market is we haven't really told the customer what to look out for in order to trust, or why you should trust us. So, um, and it's going to get worse uh, as, as APIs keep getting open to 
um, e-commerce companies where you start and complete your payment on the e-commerce website. What you need to do is constantly, you need to provide that level of assurance to the person who's shopping to say, don't worry, you're fine. And it's not just in the area of security. You need to also tell him if you have a problem, it will get solved. And that's the only way to improve trust. You have to provide information. And, and that ties into the challenge we had when we're trying to get the insurance companies to insure card-based products. Because they didn't have that much information about all the security controls in place. What you found was, we engaged one insurance company. He said, this, I'm, my, I, I don't think I can handle this alone. We got three insurance companies to come together and all three of them said, even combined, we don't think we can handle this alone. They got a reinsurance company to reinsure them, and still that thing didn't fly. And it was mainly because they didn't have enough information about the level of risk that they were carrying. And you need to, you need to see that that being a problem with a company like an insurance company would be more of a problem for a consumer who is sitting down alone in front of his computer. And he needs that assurance. He needs you to tell him that my data is secure, and if I have a problem, it's going to get resolved. Highlight of the event was the award presentation to outstanding online retail platforms in Nigeria, covering various categories, according to the 2016 PCL survey that engaged 3,000 customers. Mr. Martin Togbeche of Udala, one of the awardees, gives some insight into the strides of the platform since inception. Udala started last year, and um, we just took a year. And um, I guess that's why we got this award as a newcomer. And um, basically, we've come out We've come up with a lot of innovations. We came up with the first drone delivery in Africa. We did um, the fastest delivery ever in Africa with the drone. And uh, apart from that, we've come up with a lot of campaigns that have been exciting and which customers long for. Um, one, one of them is the Black Friday that just finished, the Udala Black Friday, which we called the real Black Friday because it was actually the real Black Friday. We had products, genuine products with um, mad crazy discounts you can ever think of and I'm um, going into Christmas um, we're coming up with the Ujara Xmas sales sales which, which is an annual event and um, one thing about the Ujara Xmas sales is that whatever you buy on our website or in our stores you get to have an additional gift to your item so let's say you buy a phone you get an additional headset or something extra to whatever you buy Right now we understand that um, the economic situation is very harsh and people are, are aware of what they use their money for. So for you to go online or for you to go into the store to buy something, it, has, it, it actually means you need what you want to buy and you actually want it. That's why you put your money to get the stuff. Mr. Bayer Adesanya speaks further on the 2016 PCL online shopping survey report. We can say with certainty that online retail is um, here to stay in Nigeria and it is growing and it is growing rapidly as well. Uh, if I think back to the first um, survey that we ran in this space in 2014, uh, for example, there are more retailers now than there were then. So we ended up speaking with more retailers. Um, uh, also, in terms of the number of respondents, um, we have more than doubled the number of respondents this year uh, compared to 2014. Um, also, in terms of, maybe not necessarily in terms of how much the average uh, shopper is spending online, but in terms of the volume, you know, uh, so there are more purchases that are happening and more people are buying. So I would say certainly that online retail, online shopping is uh, a growing area, a growing industry, if you like, driven a lot by um, the continuing growth and the, 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 the rapid changes in our telecom space, you know, technology, our financial services, uh, you know, people are able to, to, to pay for goods and services online and increasingly um, uh, there's more variety also to shop for. So I think if you want a summary, that would be the, the message that I would be passing out. The prospects for the growth of the online retail space in Nigeria is promising. A lot therefore has to be done on winning the trust of customers to make the e-commerce platform as formidable as the ones in developed economies.